hanging out here in Baldwinsville with one of the bigger names from the Oswego Speedway who is getting back into racing this year in a different kind of way. And as you can see behind him, no, that's not an ISMA car. That is actually a 350 Smack car that uh, Michael Muldoon will be driving. His dad, Mike, is with me right now. Started racing Supers back in 1983. And that first night, we'll get to that at some point later, it went about as bad as it actually could have gone. Won his first race in 1988. Won three track championships in a row as a driver, 97, 98, 99, and then won the next two as a car owner. 16 seasons over that time, 21 wins. Back now as a car owner for his son and somebody else who we'll see racing this weekend up at Evans Mills, Mike Muldoon doing joining us right now how we doing man great thanks looks like things are going well up here it was, I, I love the spread i love the shop man uh, you're a year older actually same age as me you got to feel pretty good about the way things are right now yeah well i've been building these cars for a couple of years now and uh just to have something to do and john burke has uh done a great job with smack so i really like what he's doing so that's why i'm, I'm more focused on the small blocks now than the big blocks and uh you know, the big blocks are just basically pricing themselves out of the game. So um, we're looking forward to doing a lot of uh, smack races this year. You know, my son's working a lot of hours. So we've got some people scheduled uh, next week, uh, you know, this week, uh, this coming week at Evans Mills, we got Matt Caprera, and I'm not sure how many shows he's going to run this year with us. Uh, you know, he's going to let us know. But uh, Waterford's in two weeks. we got Dave Schulich and uh, – I've had uh, a lot of offers from a lot of drivers for the rest of the year, so we're just going to fill them in as we uh, come along. All right, let's go all the way back for you. Of course, uh, for people who might not know you, your father raced, right? Yeah, yeah. my father started in 1968, driving the old Swifty car for Bob Graff out of Syracuse, and then uh, drove for Nick Virgo and Ernie June, you know, uh, you know, he really uh, never really had a great car and no. never had a, really an opportunity to show if he could drive. So, I mean, uh, it was a hard road for him and really just never had an opportunity. So is that where your experience came from, working with your dad in the yeah, shop? Yeah, yeah. You know, I started helping him when I was eight years old. And, you know, by the time I was 10, you know, 12, 13 years old, my, him and my grandfather were welders. They taught me how to weld. And, you know, at the time I was 14, 15, I was repairing other people's cars. Really? Wow. So you had a knack for this, I take it. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It was kind of like, uh, my, you know, my father was a pretty good mechanic, but uh, like I said, uh, he really just never had a chance to showcase his talents. As we look at your records, the 90s seems to be that, that best time for you. I mean, with the three track championships, classic titles. What, what, what did that? Was it that hard work? Was it the kind of stuff that your dad showed you in the shop? Or no, did that, it or? was a matter of just me, you know, the guys on the crew, Jim Isaac and a few guys just getting our heads together and making a new car and trying some things. And, and uh, over time, we figured it out. And, uh, you know, once we got that new car rolling, it was, uh, it was pretty, uh, pretty good. Was it different? I mean, you, you mentioned well, that. Well, it was before. a little different. I mean, all the cars are, are basically the same if you look at them. But, you know, engine location, wheelbase difference, uh, big shock difference. I mean, they all look the same when, it, when the skin's on them, but they're really not the same. Okay. Was what you were doing that much different than what everybody was no, doing? Not really not no. much different, but it was enough to, uh, you know, enough to dominate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like you said, you won two more as a car owner in yep. the years after that, too. Yep. So what a nice streak uh, for you. Uh, didn't go out the way you wanted to go out, though. What happened in No, we got, you know, we got wrecked, and, uh, you know, I flipped on the front straightaway and ended up uh, having titanium plates put in my neck, and that pretty much did me in. The doctor told me that, uh, you know, another another neck injury would probably kill me. So, I mean, that, that kind of did me in right there. How tough was that for you? I mean, growing up around this and racing pretty much, you know, for most of your life. Well, I, I, I was to the point, at that point, I was, I, I'd had enough, and, you know, really? I, it really didn't bother me. I didn't know how much longer I, I was going to race after that anyway, so it really didn't really change a whole lot. Okay. When did you start talking about getting your son Michael racing, or had that, our, that discussion already begun in 2000? Um, he started racing a little bit after that. He started quarter midgets, you know, right here in five, yeah, five, six years old, and he ran a couple of years of that, and, and uh, he, he was a good athlete, so he basically played uh, sports and took some time off until he got 14 years old, and we went midget racing in a couple of years, and we went to Supers when he was 16 years old. Of course, back then there weren't a lot of in-between stuff like there is today, right? No, and if I had to do it over again, I probably would have taken him to dirt racing. Really? Yeah, be, Why? just more tracks, um, just... I don't know. I mean, you have asphalt racing here in Oswego. You got one racetrack. I mean, you run dirt. I could take them, uh, you know, five, six races within 30, 40, 50 miles. And, you know, it's kind of late now, but I, I wish I'd probably taken them to dirt. Okay. Well, 
let's see how that works out. Maybe hey, he's young. Maybe he can still get out there and, yeah. and have some fun. Yeah, but not with me. Two new 350s here in the shop. Um, what kind of thoughts went into these two cars that were? Um, they're basically a twin to my big block car, but um, you know the front axles are straight axles, and uh, uh, Michael spent a lot of time on the on the, on the real small wing on top because of the small motors. And um, we won't know until we get on the track to find out how good that wing is. But he's pretty sure that we're going to have um, good straightaway speed with the smaller wing. Our wing's, you know, maybe a third smaller than their wing. So um, we'll find out when we race it this weekend if the straightaway speed's any good. But, uh, you know, he thought it was pretty good last week when we, when we practiced. But he's never really raced against anybody in 350. So I guess it, time will tell. And what was the word you used about uh, Michael originally when he got into one of the bigger cars? Well, he 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 damaged a lot of cars when he first started, but uh, he's, <laughs> he's come a long a way. Word, but we're not using that on YouTube. But yeah, yeah. he wrecked a lot of stuff. You said. Yeah, he, think, he wrecked right? a lot of crap out there. <laughs> okay, yeah, and, and it was a different word when we used the, the conversation yeah. earlier. So, and Michael went to engineering school. Did he have some input on these cars too? Then? Oh yeah, he spent. You know, he he did, he helped me design them. He made the front axles for them. He designed them all up, but. Uh, He's been in school for the last two years, so basically he'd stop by and, you know, when he was working nights, he'd, he'd come over here and work all night making the wings. He made the wings, yeah. but, uh, you know, he'd help me uh, tack the frame together, and I'd see him in a couple weeks later after I'm done welding them, but it was, it's been a two-year process. I mean, it's nothing we did in, in a month or two, so he's, uh, he's put his, uh, you know, his time in on uh, his design work. So what do you want people to say? 10, 20, maybe even 30 years down the road when a couple of more generations of Muldoons are out there. How would you want them to remember you? What, would, what do you want your legacy to be? Well, everybody knows, you know, I, I always did it my way. And uh, it is what it is. I mean, I, I, I tell it the way I see it, and some people don't like that, but <laughs> I've never really worried about that. Of course, you had a lot of good people around you, too. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, when I first started, it was just me and Jimmy Isaac and Tom Clark, and then... Along came, uh, you know, Jim Isaac, and then, you know, or I mean, um, it was uh, Johnny Coloca came along in the 80s, and then uh, I moved to Fulton and Alan Okino. I mean, Polly Canzone that works at the Speedway helped me. Bobby Magner helped me. Um, I mean, there's just, there's, I know I'm missing a few. L. Archer, there's, mm -hmm. there was a lot of guys, that too, and Mike Alferi, which was, uh, you know, he, uh, he did all the welding. He did all the fabricating, his brother Joe. I mean, there was, there was 10, 12 guys, Dave Spedman. I know, I know I'm missing some people, but there was a lot of people that came along and helped us when we had three cars, and without them, we'd have never been able to run those three cars. Okay. Of course, they're racing this weekend, like we said, the Smack Tour. You're getting this on Friday night, so this will be tomorrow up at Evans Mills. You've been there much? You, you learned well, a little bit of the practice, Well, right? I went up there last year with Charlie. Charlie had me up to help his kid on his modified, and uh, after watching his kid run uh, some laps on a modified, I told Charlie, I says, you know, I've seen a lot of 15-year-old kids, but uh, he's pretty special. He's, he's pretty, pretty smooth, special. He? He's pretty yeah. smooth, and <laughs> I told Charlie, I said, we put him on these, uh, you know, one of these cars, I think he's going to be a winner before he's done. Okay. And what was that, James? I know you wanted to get something in there, so. Just, you can just say it, James. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, Doug Holmes did a lot of the motors, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, Doug Holmes. I mean, without Doug, I mean, he's, he's, uh, he's been, I was one of his first customers way back in the, you know, early 80s or late 80s. And, uh, you know, without him, we could have never did what we did. I mean, anytime I had an engine, you know, anything wrong with the engine. He was here. He'd drive up here from Auburn. He's, uh, he's one of a kind. I mean, uh, he's going to be missed. Him. I got to go out and see him. I understand he's calling it a career here soon. So, again, you can check these cars out on Saturday. Thanks so much for having me out. I'm going to do another one with Mike where I'm going to do some other stuff, so make sure to look for that one down the road. As always, hit the blue E and subscribe, and we will see you guys uh, on the tour this year. Thanks for making time for me, Mike. I really appreciate it. Thank well, you. Thanks for coming over, and I hope everybody goes up and enjoys themselves at this Mac race.